All the stars have come in close Just to see you, I suppose And they're a-gleaming You must be dreaming And the sun has said goodbye With a twinkle in his eye He's left the ocean With sweet emotion We go dancing in the rain Riding on a midnight train Away so slowly Hello there and welcome to episode 41 of Little Big Knits. This is a podcast about knitting and my name is Selma. I'm your host. I live here in Ottawa, Canada with my uh, family and our cat Yoda. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Selma Knits. And uh, hello and welcome. Welcome to the new viewers, new subscribers. Thank you for subscribing. It's always a pleasure to have new people within our little community here. And welcome to all of those of you who have been around for a little while. Hello. I hope you are well on this, I have to say, October day. I look out my window and I see yellow leaves. And uh, it's absolutely a glorious, glorious day here in Ottawa today. Um, I also wanted to thank you from the last episode. It's so much fun to read all the comments. Thank you to everybody who left comments about what you're working on, about your experiences with eczema. It turned out there were a lot of people who uh, commented on that. Um, and that was very interesting to read. <clears throat> I still have not figured out what, uh, what is the cause, well, not necessarily the cause, but the, uh, you know, certainly, um, a contributing factor to the eczema but it seems to have been in pretty decent shape over the last month since I last spoke to you although I have not made any changes so I don't know what it's all about uh, we'll see but there were definitely some very interesting experiences and things that made me made me think a little bit um, and I know that I'm probably gonna make some changes in my diet but I just don't seem to be mentally quite prepared to do that yet <laughs> But, uh, but I'm getting there. So yeah, so thank you for, for all of that. I also wanted to tell you after my last episode that I did not go swimming. Um, I thought that uh, we could get into the water one more time, but I chickened out and that was the end of that. And I also wanted to tell you, last time I promised you that I would show you some shawls this time, but um, it's just not gonna happen. I'm gonna do it next time. A uh, couple of reasons. I'm very excited about something else I wanna talk to you about today. And um, the shawls haven't actually come out yet. Uh, most of my winter stuff came out, but uh, there's a whole bunch of other winter stuff, which is where the shawls are, that has not come out yet. And uh, so I haven't had a chance to go through them and, and all that. It's actually been a rather busy month around here. And I have had my, and my knitting time has been uh, fairly full and um, or knitting related time I should say and so uh, it just it just didn't really really happen but I also do want to acknowledge that this would normally be Rhinebeck weekend so what can I say no Rhinebeck no Kate my friend Kate of Hawthorne Cottage Craft Podcast would normally be here at this time and we would have been driving yesterday morning. Holly reminded us at a, an ungodly hour for me because I'm not a very early riser. We would have been driving to, uh, to Rhinebeck and uh, today everybody would be on the fairgrounds um, saying hello and hugging one another. And so I think that I will certainly be, begin, be giving even bigger hugs next time there is a Rhinebeck. I think we will all be able to truly appreciate what it is to be able to gather together um, in community to enjoy yarn and one another. So I know there's a little bit of lament around that this weekend, um, but let's take it as uh, a way to really look forward to uh, 
the next time we can all get together as a knitting community. In the meantime, we have all our virtual ways of getting together, uh, whether it be on Instagram or here in, or in our Ravelry group, by the way. Let me put that in here now. We have a Ravelry group called Little Big Knits, uh, where you can find the show notes. You can find our knit alongs there as well. There's also an introduction thread if you want to come in and say hello. So feel free to come and become a member and join in our knit alongs. We have two knit alongs that are both going until December 31st. So we're, we're a couple of months away, friends, and we have made so many things this year. Um, so we've got two knit alongs. One is the, the Garment uh, Galore Cal, and that is hashtag Garment Galore Cal 2020 if you want to post on Instagram. And uh, it is all about garments, any type of, of wear, like a cardigan or a dress, sweater, vests, skirts, uh, pants. So sort of like clothing and garments, not accessories. And we have had a great year with all kinds of amazing garments in there. It's just been such a delight to go through that. And, uh, and we just keep on churning them out. This is awesome. So if you feel like you may be late to the party, you are not. Um, you are fashionably late. <laughs> so come on in with your, with your fashions and show them off. So anything that you have finished this year is what counts. If it was a work in progress at the beginning of the Pucal, that's fine. Um, but anything you would have finished this year is eligible for prizes, which I will be drawing in January and be doing a separate uh, prize episode for that. The other, give, um, the other knit along that we have, and by the way, I always have to reiterate them that even though I call it a knit along, I, it's totally crochet inclusive as well. Um, and the other uh, knit along that we have is called It's About Time. So that is about um, using up patterns or stash that you've had for more than a year, in some cases maybe 10 years, um, and it's about time you used that thing because you bought it thinking that you would make something immediately and it just didn't happen. So that's the It's About Time Cal and it's hashtag It's About Time Cal on Instagram if you want to post there. I don't know if you can hear, I live in a semi-detached house and my neighbor is having a Saturday morning of uh, Tracy Chapman and I'm not quite sure who she's listening to now, but our house was built in the 40s with not the best soundproofing. <laughs> so I hope you can't hear the music, but I can. We get along very well. We've gotten, each other, gotten used to each other's music. I think uh, when our children were younger and Adele was really big, we would both be listening to the Adele uh, album at the same time. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So anyway, so those are our knit alongs that we have and they are both happening in the, um, in the little big knits group. So you can go over there and uh, join in if you like, or just come in and peruse and see what's going on in there. And before, just one last little thing, it's actually something that I wanted to say when I talked about Rhinebeck. And, you know, we've missed a lot of events this year as a result of the pandemic that's going on right now. And in some cases we may feel that our, that our, that our lives are somewhat interrupted. Um, and I think we're all really missing, uh, missing these events. I know yesterday when people were posting and today, actually, when people have been posting about Rhinebeck and all the pictures, I certainly have to say that it made me feel like we're together in spirit. It certainly warmed my heart. In a couple of occasions, it brought tears to my eyes. Um, and I think that that's because this community really is so important to me and, um, and to many of us, right? So. I am sending out gratitude and smiles and virtual hugs on this Rhinebeck weekend. And uh, let's just hold each other, um, you know, even though it is virtually and, uh, and enjoy what we can from this community in that way, because it certainly does give a lot even in a virtual context. So on that note, Let's move on with the knitting and uh, what I have to share with you today. So 
I'm quite excited, I have to say, because last time I showed you guys a hat that I had made uh, for charity and um, I couldn't decide if I actually wanted to give it for charity because I liked it so much. And this is the hat here. And um, I got a lot of comments on this hat and how great it was. And um, I got also a couple of comments about it being designed. And I had some other comments from other people saying, what about putting it down and making it, you know, design, writing down the design. And I thought, why not? So that's something that I've been actually quite busy with in the last month because I decided to write it down and I decided to... Um, get it tested by some friends and people that I know. Uh, there are about nine people, I think, who tested it. And in the meantime, I also knit multiple versions of it um, to make sure that what I was writing down made sense as well. And so I'm happy to announce that I think it was Monday of this week, I published the pattern for this hat, which is called the Westboro Hat. And this I showed you in the last episode is a sport weight yarn. This is the original one. It was knit in Yarn Days Prairie Sport Weight. And it's in their Harvest colorway. I've since gone and checked it out because I couldn't remember what it was last time. And uh, yeah, it's a sport weight hat using either 3.5 or 3.25 millimeter needles for the brim and uh, four millimeters for the, for the rest of it. It's a simple slouchy hat with uh, bobbles on it and it's been published. I'm very excited. And what I've been doing is that because this all started out of a, a concept of knitting for charity, I've decided that the proceeds for this hat until October 20th are all going to charity and I've chosen to provide the money for a um, a charity in town, an organization that works with women and children who have had to leave violent situations, and it's called Harmony House, in case you ever wanted to donate to them yourself. And so I'll be donating the money from uh, the sales of this hat uh, until October 20th. So it's uh, a $4 hat. Uh, so if you're interested in buying a copy for yourself or buying one for uh, somebody else to knit or knitting it for somebody else or, uh, you know, as a gift, then um, head on over to my new Ravelry store and uh, purchase it. <laughs> so I'm very excited. So I made a couple of different versions of this in the last month and... Um, I just wanted to share them with you and so they're kind of like FOs and sort of talking about the pattern as well. So this one is a super wash sport weight yarn and uh, as I thought it had like it, it sort of gave, gave a little bit after um, I finished it. I had made this brim with the larger needles and I then made a second half from the same yarn because I had a half a skein left and made it with the smaller um, smaller needles. Now I've worn the other one a lot. I haven't worn this one, but it is just slightly snugger. So if you are a, uh, you know, if you're a, a very tight knitter, you might want to choose the, the larger needles. But so I made a second one in the green, but then I also wanted to see how it would behave in a non superwash yarn. So I got the, um, the Julie Asselin Journey Sport Weight which is a uh, Rambouillet Targhi blend and is a non-superwash yarn. And uh, I made this version out of this pink yarn. So it's like that. And this one actually, uh, I was able to visit my mom. They have tightened restrictions again. Um, and we're not supposed to be seeing our family members at a uh, Unitarian house where my mother lives. Um, however, because I'm on the essentials list for my mom, because she's been having some issues, as I had mentioned the last time, um, they are allowing me to see her outside. So the other day I visited her and I brought this extra hat because I thought mm, it's a little bit chilly and I don't know how well she's going to be dressed. And so I thought I'll bring the hat and um, she can wear it. And so I was wearing my other hat and I brought this out and uh, and she just automatically said, oh, you made a second one. 
And it was really, it warmed my heart because my mother does not remember a lot of things at this point. She's not always 100% clear about who I am. She certainly doesn't remember my kids' names and um, she usually knows that I have two kids, but things are starting, she's starting to get more and more confused. But when it comes to my knitting, she seems to be like right on. <laughs> and about a month or so ago, when I was still able to visit her in her room, she was wearing a, a pair of socks that I had made for her. And she looked down at the socks and said, Selma, I just really like these socks you made. And I was like, well, I guess I have to make you a second pair. So, you know, it, it's interesting there are these moments with regards to my knitting where she's just right on. <laughs> and so this really looked cute on her and so I think I'll be giving this to her. Because um, I thought, you know, having a couple for myself is probably enough because I made yet another one. So this one was out of a non-superwash yarn. It's a little bit less slouchy as I thought it would be because it just doesn't have as much drape to it as the superwash yarn does. but. Um, it worked out really nicely. And then I wanted to make one more version to see what it would look like with mohair because I suggest in the pattern that you could also use a light fingering and mohair combination. And so I had some leftover yarns from Hedgerow uh, when I made my, I think it was uh, by uh, Nadia Cretin Le Chen, I think it was called the Good Enough Shawl. It was a yellow shawl that I made with some um, speckled cream yarn, and I still had some of that speckled cream yarn, which is the Hedrow, Hedrow Merino Light 500. And so I double-stranded that with some uh, drops kid silk that I had left over from when I, from when I made my habitation throw, and I made myself another version. And I'm looking down, and I'll tell you why, because I always <laughs> uh, try to put the back of the the beginning of the row at the back of the hat but I did it so well that I can't find it but I tend to the end from the cast on edge I tend to just wrap it around and then put it through um, and cut it and so this becomes the back of the hat for me but I can't always find it so well so anyway here is the white version which I'm quite in love with, I have to say. I cannot wait. I feel like this is just like a great winter hat. Uh, it's got a little bit more warmth in a way because of the mohair, but I just love it. And it's got very light speckling. And because of the mohair, it's kind of a lighter hat. Um, I think it's got great slouch to it and volume to it as well. And, and it ends up having a little bit more volume than, than slouch. Um, but yeah, there were some other testers who also did it with mohair and their hats all look fabulous and uh, people used very different yarns and it worked in, in all kinds of yarn. One tester did use a fingering weight yarn and, and that hat ended up being a little bit smaller. So that is something, think, something to think about that um, a sport weight is probably better or a fingering weight with a mohair for example. So this is the Westboro hat, called the Westboro hat because uh, the neighborhood that I live in here in Ottawa is called Westboro. And uh, so I decided to call it the Westboro hat because it is kind of a perfect um, hat for, for strolling around, uh, whether it be in the forest or in the neighborhood. Um, it's light but warm. It's great for this time of the year or even probably until, you know, the, the lighter winter days or the the, the not so cold winter days, but I would probably not wear this in these seriously cold winter days, but let's see. Let's see what ends up happening. I probably won't be going out all that much <laughs> because <laughs> of the COVID situation, so I may not be wearing hats quite as much this year, and I may not be going out in the minus 20 as much, but so that's that. I'm really, really excited. So thank you so much for the encouragement because uh, because people wrote and said, you know, you really should write that down. Something, all the stars kind of aligned, and I did. People have told me about that, uh, to do that, or to suggested that I do that with other things that I've sort of made on the fly, um, but it just never came together uh, for me to do it, whereas this time it really did, and it was really fun to do. I really, really enjoyed putting the bad pattern together, um, and if you get it, I hope you enjoy it too, and look forward to hearing about it. And you'll have to definitely post pictures and uh, and let me know. Tag me if you post them on Instagram or come into the group and let me know or share it with the group in, on, uh, on Ravelry. 
So let's move on to other knitting, shall we? Before that, I'll just take a little sip of my tea. I am drinking wonderful jasmine green tea out of this fabulous pumpkin mug. Isn't that the most amazing thing? And this is a gift that Amelia gave to me, um, who is a, a wonderful, wonderful bag maker, actually. I have a bag of hers with bicycles on it, you may remember. Uh, she has a um, an Etsy shop called Mila Sweet Mix. I believe I'll write it down here. And she has fabulous bags. Actually, she uh, Amelia just started a new format, and I'm quite intrigued by it. Um, but uh, she also gave me this wonderful mug that is by a potter whose name I cannot remember. Um, I know I had written it down in a previous episode. If I find it, I'll, I'll put it down here as well. But somebody who is in the States um, and makes these fabulous pumpkin mugs. So obviously this is the right time of the year since we are in pumpkin season and it goes awfully well with my, my little display of pumpkins that I have here um, as we move into the you know, the Halloween and uh, Day of the Dead season. So, there we go. So what am I wearing today? I'm wearing a make from, when did I make this? Sometime in the last year. Was it this year in 2020 or 2019? I don't recall. But this is the Evening Dew. I think it was last winter. Anyway. <laughs> this is the Evening Dew cardigan by Ririko. I made this out of yarn that I'd gotten at Rhinebeck. I've bought it twice because I love this yarn that much. It is the Persimmon Tree Farms, uh, what do they call it, Prime Alpaca, I believe. It comes in rather large skeins, um, and it's just an absolutely beautiful, beautiful alpaca. I made a vest out of it, um, a two-tone gray vest, and then I made this, uh, this as well, and I think I might have given some of it away, did I? I think I did a little bit. And I kept some, and I have enough for mittens, so I'm hoping to make mittens out of it at some point. But it is just, it's become very much a part of my COVID fashion, I have to say, because t-shirts and cardigans and sweatpants are what seem to get me through the day. Um, and it just looks nice with, with you know, just a, a, a t-shirt underneath it. So, just so you can have a look, it's just a very kind of boxy, easygoing cardigan um, with drop sleeves. And uh, I just really like it. It's really cozy. It's very, very warm. And um, it's really nice. So that is what I'm wearing today. It's gotten a lot of wear. And um, there's been a tiny little bits of, you know, little bits of, of fluff here and there. But overall, this, this alpaca is just an absolutely stunning fiber. So, um, yeah, I really, really like this cardigan and I wear it a lot. And I, I don't actually think that I've worn it on the podcast, so I thought I should probably wear it today. It was a very nice, easy construction as well. It was a top-down construction. Um, it was a little bit slow because it's, these are all cables going down, but they were really quite easy and, and nice to make. And uh, it's just been a really, really nice cardigan to wear. So that's what I'm wearing. I thought that I would have my rug sweater and my Venezia shawl by Jochi Lacotelli finished by today, but I've been in Hatland for the last month. Um, so I just haven't been able to finish them. What I have finished are a couple of uh, hats for charity because uh, obviously, um, well, I decided that I'll definitely be keeping obviously the mustard one, the pink one will be going to my mum, and um, the white one I'll be keeping, but somebody was actually interested in buying this hat, so I might be selling the hat and then giving that in addition also to Harmony House. Um, so uh, that's what's gonna happen with that one. Uh, so I did still want to make some hats for the shop in town, hijinks, which was, uh, you know, 
looking for knitwear to sell. So last time I had started this um, this hat I showed you, which was out of a DK weight uh, self-striping yarn by Jinx Yarn, uh, and she no longer um, she no longer dies. But I just finished this hat, which uh, I love the colors, but it's really they're really not my colors. Um, I mean, it's not terrible, but not quite. So this is a hat that's going to be going to charity. And I kind of used the same model as I did with uh, the uh, Westboro hat. I sort of used, I think I used the same stitch count and uh, without the baubles, pretty much the same construction. And then I brought out some uh, Malabrigo Chunky that I have had in my stash for a while. So it's about time it got used up. As well as this, this has been in my stash for a while. This was a, a, a D stash from uh, a friend and uh, it's finally getting used up. Um, and I made a hat uh, out of a Chunky um, that I just sort of put together. I think I cast on 72 stitches with five millimeter needles. I have to say the skeins are from the factory and they were a little, they were the sort of the, um, what do you call those? You know, uh, the stuff that wouldn't be, be sent to shops, but the sort of the leftovers and there were lots of breaks in them. So slightly annoying because I wanted this to be kind of more of a toque type of thing with a folded brim and that's there. So I'm going to have to try and weave that in, in a very invisible way. Um, but it's just going to be, you know, kind of like, <laughs> Uh, this type of a, a thing although somebody could just wear it without the the brim folded so these are the two things that I've actually finished in this month and um, yeah and that's it it, fe it I mean it feels like I haven't been very productive but I've made a lot of hats <laughs> that's what I've done and I have also worked on the other items too uh, which I'll just move into. I'm knitting a second hat out of Malabrigo Chunky. This is out of the glazed pecan colorway. I'm not actually sure what this colorway is, but it's a kind of a deep turquoisey color. And I'm doing the exact same thing, casting on uh, 72 stitches with five millimeter needles, um, going up a size to 5.5 millimeter needles for the rest of it, and uh, doing some sort of decreases. So. Um, I've been really having fun knitting hats this last month. It was very inspiring to to write up that pattern and get so excited about that hat. Um, so, yeah. So this will probably be the last hat though, because I really do feel that I want to finish up my other makes. So let's move on to the whips. So in this bag I showed you last time, which was one that I'd made myself a couple of years ago when I had the shop open called a little creek designs and uh, I, I'm you know what I feel bad because I had gotten these tags and they really aren't the very best quality so if I were to open up my shop again I think I'd look for for different tags they've kind of frayed and um, haven't kept up so beautifully um, but I've continued to work on the Venezia shawl and I've made great progress I am actually beyond the halfway mark this is the, the halfway mark here, so I am on the descent, essentially, and um, I really enjoy it, and I have now memorized the, the lace pattern, so I don't have to look at the pattern that much. Occasionally, I'll, I'll check just to make sure that I'm doing the right thing, but I'm just able to just pick it up wherever and just keep knitting, which is really great. And um, it's just, it's actually been a really, really nice knit. And I just love this pink. I'm really looking forward to, the, for, to this being ready. And I think it'll be ready just in time for the really cooler weather. And um, so I am looking forward to that. Kind of thinking, do I need to knit a pink, a light pink hat? <laughs> Maybe I do. Uh, but I do think it'll probably go nicely with the, the white one as well. You know, those will go fine together. I might just have to knit a pink hat too. But uh, this has been, uh, so this is a pattern by Hoji Locatelli, but I'm knitting it as part of her uh, Hoji Falcal. 
and I'm using the Tin Roof Singles by Roots and Rain and this is Donna's yarn she is a local dyer I absolutely love Donna's work her her dyeing is just beautiful she sells she has a website uh, or is she on Etsy I think it's a website is it on Etsy I don't remember but it's Roots and Rain if you look it up and um, this is her singles base and it's just beautiful and this one is dyed out of Eastern Brazil wood which makes this beautiful pink I believe Donna actually has a, uh, a shop update happening on October 18th. This podcast will probably be out about then. But uh, she really has some beautiful yarn and uh, I'm really wondering what I'm going to do. But anyway, I, I, I really enjoy working with her yarn and I love seeing Donna uh, and, and her work um, here and there in town as well and being able to see her work locally or in real life. It's really beautiful. I just need a little sip of tea. So I do hope that this will be ready for the next time I podcast and maybe I'll be wearing it. The other thing that I've been working on uh, and is in this gigantic buku bag and is actually almost outgrowing <laughs> the buku bag. Like it's it's quite quite full in there and this is the rug sweater by Junko Okamoto um, I have finally finished the color work on the body and I am actually at the point where I'm probably going to put ribbing on for the bottom I think in her original pattern there is no ribbing um, but I think I want to put something I'm thinking about either like a three by one ribbing so that it's not too ribbing like um, with a little bit of a, a rolled bit at the bottom or an eye cord. But I have to try it on to see uh, about the length. <clears throat> um, I finished the color work. I'm a little concerned with all the puckering. I find there's a lot of it. I feel like I spent so much time trying to make sure the floats were long enough and yet I'm still concerned about it. I don't quite know if I'm gonna love this sweater when it's finished. We'll have to see. I've tried it on and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna reserve judgment. <laughs> but uh, right now I have to say I haven't enjoyed knitting it a lot. I think I'm not a huge fan of doing color work as you've probably gathered by now because I tend to find myself constantly having to uh, you know stop and check and slow myself down I haven't really been able to find a great rhythm uh, when I used the um, the ring uh, on the Talia sweater that I made for my friend that was probably the best experience I've had knitting color work so I'll definitely return to that it's upstairs I didn't use it with this one because the yarn was so thick I thought it would be awkward um, but I think the fact that I had this on smaller needles and it had such long floats made it really difficult to, to really ensure that the floats were long enough. So it's been a little bit of a slog, I have to say. And I think if I were to make it again, I think I would make it with slightly smaller yarn um, or, or, you know, less thick yarn, thinner yarn for a less oversized sweater. Um, but again, let's see what it looks like when it's finished because it's a little bit of a mystery. I'm having a hard time figuring out how this is going to look when it's finished. So, and I feel like, you know what, if it's not for me, I'll be quite happy to give it to somebody who might really enjoy it. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And I do find that in the past I've been concerned about puckering and then everything just relaxes when it gets uh, wet and laid flat afterwards. So we'll see. <clears throat> but I am very very close to finishing the bottom and my my lovely little progress keeper is there from Whitney Marie Anderson designs and uh, along with <laughs> with the uh, the row marker but um, yeah I'm just about at the ribbing section so I need to try it on before I do that ribbing to ensure that I like the length and then how much ribbing I want to put on and so forth and then I'll do it but I just haven't gotten to it. This is being knit out of 
yarn from Batten Kill Fibers in uh, the, where is it now? It's kind of in Sarasota, New York area. And, um, is it Sarasota? Yes. I seem to be doubting myself a lot this morning. <laughs> um, and it's beautiful Corydale yarn. Very bouncy, very thick, very lush. Um, and I've certainly enjoyed the yarn. That's been really great. And then you'll recall from last time that the color work was done in Lopi and um, double stranded with some other yarns that I had here. So, <clears throat> so that's the rug sweater. And because my mother really likes the socks that I made for her, I decided to cast on a second pair of socks. So in this bag that you've seen now a few times, because it's just become like this great little bag that I have around all the time and a small project goes in it, I started a pair of socks for my mom. And so this was made, by the way, by my friend Sue, who has a podcast called Distant Stitches. Um, if you are looking for a new podcast, which she hosts with uh, another friend named Liz. Sue and I started podcast. Well, actually, I shouldn't say we started podcasting. <laughs> Sue started podcasting, and then I started joining her podcast, which was at the time called The Two Tangled Skeins, and then that's how I ended up having my own podcast as well. So, um, and Sue made this bag for my birthday, and I just really, really love it. Um, she's made me many bags, and I've always enjoyed them a lot. Um, so I uh, am actually knitting a pair of vanilla socks for my mom with yarn that <laughs> Sue actually gave me as well from Knit Picks. Um, so this is the this is the Sue bag <laughs> with the Sue yarn, um, and I actually don't know what this colorway is. It's um, in their Felici, and this is called, this is their Felici base, and this is their Nassau colorway. And it's just striped. I've done a whole uh, color repeat at this point. And uh, it's really beautiful. I'm really loving the colors that are coming out. And uh, so I'm expecting this to be for my mom. Although I have to say, these colors are really making me think about another friend of mine. So if I don't end up giving these to my mother, I'll make her another pair for, for Christmas. So there's gonna be some sock knitting in my near future. Um, and I think that's, those are the real knitting uh, works in progress that I have today to share with you. But I did wanna share something else. So when would that have been? Maybe four years ago or so? I knit a sweater, and I'm going to put the picture here, uh, a sweater called the Koda, and this is a design by Olga Buraya Kefalian, uh, who's a very interesting designer and often has some very, um, very structural and interesting elements to her designs. So I made this sweater called the Koda, which is a bottom-up sweater, and it has, as you could see, as you can see, it has the um, kind of like a, a raglan-looking construction in the front, but on the back, it's got a horizontal sort of curving element that looks like the same here, but it's on the back, and the the two bits had to be Kitchener together. So I made that sweater, and I wore it quite a bit, um, but. The thing that's happened to me with bottom-up sweaters is that I always end up making the torso too long. And so the sweater always felt a little long, and it also felt like I often had to fidget with it for some reason. <clears throat> but I wore it quite a bit, and uh, when I was taking out all of my uh, winter sweaters in you know the last couple of weeks, um, I saw it, and then I realized that it has stains on it. And so I started thinking, oh, you know what? Maybe it's time for me to say goodbye to this sweater. I don't wear it that much, and now it's got these stains on it. So I put it in the giveaway pile, and then I had a light bulb moment, and I thought, aha, I'm gonna do what Amy Palco did. 
Amy Palco is a, a podcaster. She has a podcast called The Meaningful Stitch. Um, and she's a, a new podcaster, but uh, I just really enjoy watching her. She's coming from Scotland and uh, has beautiful knits and is a lovely person. And I've really enjoyed watching her podcast. And Amy made a sweater and accidentally felted it. And so I started thinking, maybe I should felt this sweater. I have been wanting to make a teapot cozy, you know, one of those teapot covers for the longest time. I've been thinking about it, I've thought of different ways of making it, whether it was sewed with like quilted, or whether it was knitted, or whether it was crocheted, or whether it was felted, and I thought maybe I'll felt that sweater and turn it into the teapot cozy. So here's the sweater. <laughs> Isn't it the most adorable thing? Oh my gosh, it's so cute. I, it's so cute that I've just enjoyed looking at it because it's so teeny weeny. So this is the front and here are the felted cables and here is the back detail. And as you can see, there's a bit of a puckering thing here and that was always part of it too and that sort of bothered me when I wore it. Um, so, Watch this space, there will be a teapot cozy at some point. And I honestly thought that I may be able to keep this together or cut it and sew it and literally just choose this portion here or underneath this here. I don't think I'll incorporate that, that uh, cable. Um, sew it and I thought I might do some embroidery on it. I thought about dyeing it, but I do like the cream. Um, or I might, I might dye it, but I thought about doing some sort of applique or some sort of stitching on it and turning that into a teapot cozy. And then I've always wanted for my French press, my, I, I've always wanted a cozy for it. So I thought I might take the two sleeves and th turn them into a French press cozy. And I don't know, we'll see what might come about these. So this is my last work in progress, not quite a work in progress, but prepared to become something. So let's see, uh, let's see when that happens. But uh, thank you so much, Amy, for the inspiration. I'm, I'm really excited about this. And so that is really it for the knitting today. And so I just thought I'd give you a little update on what's been going here over the last month uh, uh, or what's been going on here over the last month. Well, you know one thing, I've been um, putting together a knitting pattern and that has taken up a lot of my uh, my creative juices and my my contemplations and all kinds of things. And, and I have to say, I think I mentioned last time, uh, you know, there was a little bit of a struggle in trying to figure out what the fall and the winter were going to look like uh, for me and for us in terms of um, the pandemic. And I, I was approaching it with a little bit of trepidation. So I sort of decided that, uh, you know, okay, how are we going to enjoy this? And I, and I remembered that there are things that I do uh, in regular times to try and figure out how I'm going to enjoy a period of time. And I tend to do these sort of seasonal bucket lists. So I put together a bucket list for sort of September, October, which had on it all kinds of things. Like it might have things that I want to cook. It might have, uh, you know, hikes that I want to do. It might have movies that I want to watch or um, events that I want to attend. Clearly not so much in this case. Um, just different, you know, whatever strikes me. Um, you know, of course, in the fall, I'll have things on there like certain hikes, apple picking, pumpkin pie making, um, different things like that. Uh, and then I look at it and, you know, regularly and sort of say, OK, this weekend we're going to do this thing that that's on the list. And we end up having or I end up feeling like I'm doing fun things. And I also take the time to notice those fun things. Um, I also started a uh, gratitude journal um, as well and that's something that I started at the beginning of the pandemic and it really helped me to calm down because I was feeling quite anxious and I think anytime I start feeling like that I do the opposite and I start uh, 
looking for the positive things and, and, and trying to find uh, what I can be grateful for so that I don't end up hyper-focusing on the negative. And so I've done that. So we've done a lot of walking. It's been really, really great going out. The colors this year have been just fabulous. And, um, and it's just been, we've had pretty nice weather overall. And it's just been beautiful to get outside to the different places in the area. Um, because of the tightening restrictions now, our movement is a little bit restricted. Um, I usually go, we go on to the, the Quebec side a lot to go for hikes and they've closed that down. We actually went not realizing that they had done that. Um, and uh, I think they were sort of announcing it at the same time as we were going over there. So we went over there to hike and to see the alpacas in Chelsea. I'll leave some footage of them at the end. They were really, really cute. There's a, a farm there and they, they allow you to come and sort of tour the farm. It's very small, but um, and find out a little bit more about alpacas and uh, and so anyway we've just and that was actually on my list my September October list was to see the Chelsea alpaca so it was really nice to go and do that and I also thought I want to do something new um, learn something new and so I had actually signed up with the University of Alberta for an indigenous history course um, but I have, and it, apparently you, you have to have an app, which I downloaded, but I have not been able to get the bloody app to work. So I have to figure that out at some point, but I thought it would be nice to take the opportunity and do some, an audit, some virtual university courses, for example. I have also signed up for a course, a virtual course with, um, with Espace Tricot. They are doing uh, a course that's being given by somebody, I cannot remember her name, um, uh, which is on an embroidery on knitting but it looks very much like Japanese stitching it's very interesting it's very geometric so I'll be doing that in early November and uh, and I've also been thinking about maybe taking a, a master class of uh, cooking just uh, I think they're just sort of virtual you know cooking shows in a way where they walk you through certain techniques and certain styles of cooking and Otam Otalengi who has uh, a few uh, cookbooks uh, he is a an Israeli chef he's got um, a, a book called Jerusalem another one called Simple uh, he's got a couple of other cookbooks that are just not coming to one called Otalengi which is his last name so he's giving a master class and I might join that and I just thought you know do some interesting things like that so that <clears throat> I'm attending something even though it's not in real life even though it's virtual so um, yeah and then one last thing that we have done, which has brought a lot of fun into the fall, uh, is that Isla is very much into manga and very much into anime. And so <clears throat> I suggested that we have a month of Japan themed stuff. So October is Japan month in our house and we are learning a different word every day. This week, in fact, it was all names of the week. And, um, and you know, we've just learned different things, you know, very basic words like hello, konnichiwa, <laughs> and, uh, and goodbye, and sorry, and things like that. And, uh, and so we learn a word every day, and uh, we've watched a few Japanese movies. Well, we've watched a couple so far. One which was an animated movie called Your Name, and uh, another one called The Shoplifters, which was, I think, nominated for an Oscar last year or the year before. Um, and so that's been really interesting, and we've listened to some classical Japanese music, which has been really beautiful. And uh, just doing, uh, you know, eating some, obviously we've eaten some sushi, and uh, I bought some ramen noodles, so we're gonna make ramen. I've never actually made a proper ramen soup, so I'm hoping to do that. And um, just doing things like that, to uh, bring in some fun. So we are finding ways to have fun. And then the last thing is that we got a hot tub, um, which arrived on Thursday. And uh, so it took about almost 24 hours for it to be filled and, and actually heat up. Um, but yesterday we were able to really enjoy it and um, 
it's been a really fun. So that was a real luxury. That's actually a gift from my father. My father passed away in 2018 and I've never done anything with um, the money that I received. So I thought, you know what, we're going to buy ourselves a hot tub and have uh, some fun. And I, this was not something that I just did last week. I actually bought this hot tub at the end of May but everybody else had the exact same idea as me. <laughs> and because of issues in the supply chain due to the to the pandemic, um, parts were taking longer for them to get. So it actually took longer for them to put the hot tub together. So it ended up taking a long time. And people who are ordering hot tubs now in October are going to be getting them next June. So there's a real disruption to the supply chain for these types of items. Um, but so we did wait a long time for it, but it's arrived and uh, um, everybody's quite excited about it in the house. And so we just uh, spent uh, yesterday in the hot tub. <laughs> and it was funny, my husband looked at me at one point, he goes, you really look relaxed. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm really enjoying this. So it's gonna be a nice way to, um, to enjoy being at home. And um, so, so that that's kind of been that's kind of been the last month and uh it's been a good time and one last question actually something that i wanted to ask a little bit earlier in the podcast um so perhaps not everybody's here because i don't know if there are people who don't stick around for the talkie part but um our knit alongs are going to be finishing at the end of december and uh not that i want to start another knit along on january 1st but uh, you know, we've done the Garment Galore Cal a couple of times, or three times now, I think, and I do love it. I Do we want to continue the Garment Galore Cal? Are there other cows that you'd like to see? Um, if you have some ideas, feel free to share them below, and um, and let's see what, what ends up striking the fancy of the Little Big Knits community. So, um, yeah, if you have any ideas, please feel free to share them, and uh, and yeah. So, I think that brings me to the end of the podcast. I think uh, I will leave it here for today. It's been really, really nice to, um, you know, catch up and let you know what I've been working on for the last month. I hope this podcast finds you well and uh, that you're doing all right. Um, and finding, finding some joy. We have to find it. Uh, <laughs> we just have to find it. And so uh, I hope you do. And um, we'll see you in the next little while. Take care, friends. And I'll leave you with some more images of some of the last month, of the last walks, of the alpacas. And, uh, and then we'll see you again uh, in a little while. Take care. Bye-bye. to see you, I suppose, and they're a gleaming, you must be dreaming, and the sun has said goodbye, with a twinkle in his eye, he's left the ocean, with sweet emotion. side of town and he's so lonely I love you only I love you It's their favorite time of night 
when they can hear you from somewhere near you, and the palm trees try to bend to be closer to their friends. They're made of magic. Reach out and grab it. We go dancing in. Sleepy side of town, and he's so lonely.